Hello all, welcome to Selenium Python training series. In this session, as part of Selenium WebDriver, I am going to explain the DOM basics for Selenium. So let's get started. This session is a continuation of the previous session where I explained the JavaScript basics for Selenium. So in this session, I'm going to cover the DOM basics. Okay. So why JavaScript, why DOM, why it is a continuation and all because JavaScript internally uses the DOM statements for accessing the elements on the page. Okay. So JavaScript doesn't directly access the elements on the web pages, rather JavaScript internally uses the DOM statements. Hence we need to learn or have some basic knowledge of the DOM. Okay. You don't have to learn the DOM in detail for Selenium rather just learn at this level, whatever I'm going to teach you in this session, that much of knowledge of DOM is enough uh, okay, for Selenium. So let's continue. So first I'm going to cover some DOM methods. Okay. So you don't have to cover entire DOM rather whatever I'm list listing down here. You see, these are the items that you're going to learn in this session. That much is enough for Selenium guys. Okay. So fine. So DOM methods, I'm going to show you. The first one is document dot get element. This is a method. Okay. Get elements by ID. Now to use this method, get element. It's not elements. It's element. Actually, there's a mistake document dot get element by ID. So let me open this browser and uh, take you to one application sample application, say, oh my dot blocks dot com. So now right click inspect uh, anywhere on the page and you will get this Google cool Chrome dev, dev tools and go to the console tab. If you get a lot of this uh, errors and warnings, just clear it out. Okay, now here, write down. So what I want to do is I want to locate with the help of this DOM statements, I want to access this uh, button. Let's say there's a button here, click to get alert button. Okay, I want to access this alert with the help of DOM statement. JavaScript, uh, using JavaScript, we cannot directly access this button. Rather, JavaScript internally uses whatever the DOM statements I'm going to write here to access this button, let's say. Okay, for that reason, we are learning this DOM statements, okay, right? So uh, let me inspect this button first of all, okay, before writing any DOM statements inside this console tab, right? Let me inspect this button here and uh, you see this particular uh, button, this is HTML code and it has an ID. I'll copy this ID of this button and uh, go to the console tab and type down document dot. What is the first method I told you? Get element by ID. It's not elements, it's element by ID, okay? Document dot get element by ID, type it. And provide the circular brackets here inside the circular brackets provide single quotes and in, in between the single quotes, paste the ID of this particular button, which you copied just now from this HTML code of this button. Okay. Now press enter. You see, this has located this button. You see the HTML code of this button is coming means using this DOM statement, we are able to locate this button, right? So similarly, we have other methods also get element by ID is one method I covered to you how to use a uh, DOM uh, method in DOM statements to access a particular element on the web page. I just now demonstrated. And similarly, we have other methods like it, uh, it's no more get element, uh, all these methods you see, get elements, elements, elements kind of thing is there. And also at the end, you have to provide the index. Since it is elements, we have to give the index here. Okay. Since it is element, you don't have to give any index in this first command, but uh, from the second method or second command onwards. Okay. Since it is elements, get elements, get elements kind of thing. We have to give the index. Now let's go with the next one, get elements by name. For example, uh, if I take you to this application, tutorialsinja.com slash demo application, where you have the search box field. Now, I inspect the search box field and I look into the HTML code of this uh, search box field and see it doesn't have any ID. Is there, is there any possibility that I can write a DOM statement like document dot get element by ID and then, you know, uh, locate the search box field. It's not possible because there is no ID attribute here. So I have to go with this name in such kind of situations. You have to use another DOM method that is uh, get elements by name because in here we have a name attribute for this uh, search box, uh, search box field. Okay. I'll copy this name attribute value and go to the console tab, clear out all this stuff and type down document dot. Here is here it is get elements. It's not element, it's elements by class name. And in the circular brackets, provide single quotes. And between the single quotes, you provide the name attribute value of the search box field that I just now copied from this HTML code of this particular search box field. And now press enter. So here there's a problem. Why? Because we forgot to provide the index here, right? That's why index is required. Otherwise you'll get a list of kind of thing. So I'll just, uh, you know, type this again, document dot get elements by class name. And at the end you have to provide, let's say index kind of thing. Okay. Like zero LQ and press enter. So zero is not there. Then elements by class name such, right? Uh, then, okay. I uh, There's a mistake here. There's a mistake here. 
I'm using class name. I have to use name, right? That is a name locator. You see, to clearly observe the search box field, it has a name locator, not the class name. This is not the class name. Copy this name locator and come back here and clear this out. Okay, it's not going away. Uh, anyhow, uh, just clear this stuff and write down document dot get elements by name you say, not class name. Say name because that is name locator, right? Give that name locator, name attribute value of the search box field. And uh, since elements is there, you have to give index, let's say zero and press enter. You see, it's now it is coming. With class name, it was not coming because this particular thing doesn't have an ID or class name. It has a name. So I have to use that name attribute value to locate this uh, search box field. You see, search box field is getting located. Now the third one, now the third one here we have is a uh, get elements by class name. Okay, let's go with the class name this time. ID is done, name is done. Now let's go with the class name. Okay, so how to go with the class name? For that, I'll again uh, take you to this application that is omai.blogspot.com application. And on this, if you scroll down, there is a button here. If I inspect this button, you will get the HTML code of this particular button where you will see that this particular button doesn't have any ID. There's no name also, but it has a class. So in this case, I can use this uh, class attribute value and uh, create a DOM statement here like document dot get elements by instead of name to take class name. Earlier we taken name. Now let's take class name and here provide a circular bracket and in between the circular brackets provide single quotes and give that class attribute value of this button and now press, uh, don't press enter because it's elements means you have to give the index otherwise you'll get error. Uh, you will get some some other result, okay? Now say zero, you'll get this particular button getting located. This is a way to write DOM statements. And these are the methods, get element by ID, get elements by uh, elements by name of index, get elements by class name of index, like that, okay? These are the different DOM statements. Now the next one is tag name, okay? We can also locate the elements with the help of tag name. For example, if I want to locate uh, uh, all the input tags, okay? Uh, there are a lot of elements on this page having the input tag. You see this uh the search uh, search box field, the search button, this radio button, this checkbox, which everything will have the input tag only. So let's locate that. Okay. So I'll simply write down document dot get elements again by tag name. Okay. Tag name, circular brackets, give the tag name. Well, which tag name you want? Uh, input tag name, I told you, right? Input HTML tag name. And here you have to give the index otherwise a list of elements will come you see total 34 input elements are there on this page having this input tag okay so if i have to find the first one let's say out of this uh, 34 0 to 33 index will be there first one will be at the zero at the index now press enter you'll get the first element out of this 34 the first you see this username is getting highlighted you see this one now if you want to find the second one give the index as one with the same tag name and all now you got the second one that is the password is coming now give the third one that is index two and press enter. Did I press enter? Yeah. You see something is getting located. That is this user input tag. Okay, input element is getting located. This element having the input tag in the HTML is getting located. Now give three like that. You can go till you know total thirty four elements are there. You can go through thirty three. Okay, zero in the zero at the index to thirty three means thirty four. It will become. Okay. It will locate the password field here. Then. Let's do for a few elements. This is a login button. I think next one will come as a power up. The cancel button, most probably. See, there's a cancel button and so on. This is how we can use get elements by tag name. Okay. Then what else is there? Query selector. Okay. If you want to locate these elements with the help of some CSS selectors and all right, you can use a query selector. So let me do that. Refresh here and uh, document dot uh, get. What is that? Uh, document dot query selector, right? Query, query selector, and in that give that uh, some kind of uh, you know. There is give double quotes here, and uh, in that give some CS selector or something. Okay, let's give some selector. Let's say, um, let's inspect this text area field, and it has an ID. Copy this ID, and I'll simply say hash. This is a CSS selector. Hash ID. You see, it's getting located. You see, that exterior field is getting you. This is a CSS selector I'm giving here. Okay. The CSS selector, you have to pass to the query selector. That is also possible. So, like this, we have different DOM methods. Okay. Like this, we have different uh, DOM methods. So, these DOM methods using which we have created some DOM statements like document dot and all those stuff. 
this will be uh, given to this as an input to this javascript so the javascript will use his dom statements to access elements on the web pages as javascript cannot directly access elements on the web pages javascript uses this dom statements containing this dom methods to access elements on the web pages hope that is clear one more method is there finally that is click uh, let me demonstrate this click for you let's say i would like to click on this button first i'll inspect this button when i inspect this button guys i'll, I'll uh, this is html code of this button and uh, there's an idea, I'll copy this ID and you know how to write the DOM statement, right? When it is an, when there an ID attribute is there, document.get element by ID, give that ID and in the single quotes, uh, give that ID of that particular button, sorry. And it will locate this button. Press enter, you see the button is getting located. Now I want to click on this button for that. Uh, in uh, There is a DOM method known as click that we can use. Uh, just write down here and say dot at the end, you say dot click. And now press enter, you see the button got clicked. This is a proof. If you're getting an alert, let me show you. If I click this button, I'm getting an alert, right? With the DOM statement also, without clicking the button directly manually using my mouse and all, I'll just write the click command here with the DOM statement. Press enter, you see the DOM statement is coming. And the alert is coming means the, this particular button got uh, clicked. Okay, the same alert is coming, you see. With the DOM statement also, the button is able to click. So these are the different uh, DOM methods we have. Now let's move on to some other things like DOM properties. So, DOM statements not only comprises of this DOM methods, but also uh, in DOM statements, we use this DOM properties. So what is the use of this DOM properties? You'll come to know, okay? I'll start with some DOM properties like inner HTML. Fine. So let me uh, do one thing. I want to read, I want to get this text, okay? With the help of DOM statements, I want to get this particular text. So how to do that? For that, I'll inspect this uh, text here and uh, I'll see the HTML code it as an ID, okay? Uh, you, you see the whatever the text uh, that is uh, that I want to retrieve, right? That is practice automation here. That is there in between the tags of this paragraph tags. So I'll write something like this: document dot get element by id the id of that uh, text. This particular practice automation here text dot you dot and use that DOM property, one of the DOM property that is inner HTML to get the text between the tags of this particular element. That is in a HTML and press enter, you see, the text between the tags of this particular element got retrieved and uh, displayed here, okay? So this is a DOM statement for getting the text between the tags of this particular element. This is how we have to use inner HTML. Then I would like to get the ID. I can show you one more example for inner HTML. Let's say I'll, I'll take you to this uh, application, let's say Compendium Dev, where we have these two paragraphs. I want to get this uh, first paragraph text, let's say. So I'll first inspect this paragraph and see it has an ID. I'll copy this ID. Now go to the console and here I'll write on document dot get element. I first I'll locate that uh, paragraph. Okay, with the help of the ID of that paragraph, I locate. After that, I would like to get the text. You see this uh, HTML code, right? There's some text between the tags. I want to get this text means which uh, DOM property I have to use at the end of this DOM statement in the HTML I have to use. And press enter, you see the paragraph text has been retrieved and printed here. Okay. So this is what is the uh, inner HTML. Let's now use uh, this ID DOM property. Let's say I want to get the ID of this uh, paragraph, okay? Now I, uh, now I want to retrieve the ID of this paragraph. So you see there are two paragraphs here. I'll create, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, anything. I can do anything mm, that is uh, fine. So I'll use document dot, okay? Uh, so here I want to get the ID, right? So document dot get elements by tag name I'll use, okay? Tag name. What is the tag name of this paragraph? P tag name there, okay? Elements by tag name, okay? The P tag I'll give here and uh, here I'll write down zero because uh, there are two paragraphs. Zero is the first paragraph and, uh, you know, just press enter, you see the paragraph is coming. And this paragraph has an ID. I want to get this value of this particular ID of this paragraph. So how to get it? I'll write that again and say ID at the end and press enter. You see the ID attribute value of this particular paragraph is coming here. Okay, this is how we have to use the ID DOM property. Now document.title. Next one is if I want to get the title of this page, what is the title of this page? Basic web page title. I want to retrieve that document dot title. Document dot title and press enter. You see. The title of this page is what? Basic web page title that is coming here. If I want to get the URL of this page, current URL of this page, document dot 
URL and press enter, you see the current URL of this page is coming here. Like this, a lot of DOM properties are there here and few whatever the generally used DOM properties I'm explaining here. Now, uh, let's say I'll go to this application and uh, you know I want to enter some text into the text area field. With the help of DOM statement, I want to enter some text into the, if JavaScript has to use some DOM statement to enter some text into the text area field, how does it use, how to create a DOM statement which enters some text into the text area field. I'll inspect this text area field. As you can see, there is an ID for this text area field. I'll first locate this text area field with the help of the DOM statement. Okay, I'll write down document dot get element by ID, give the ID of that text area field and now use a DOM property. If you want to enter some uh, text into this text area field, you say value is equal to, give some value, let's say my name is Arun. I want to enter this uh, text into the text area field, okay? You see, before uh, before uh, I press enter, right, there's no text in the text area field. After I press enter with the help of DOM property value, in this particular element, I'm typing this text. The center, you see, my name is Arun Motor Record entered into the text area field. This is how we can use a value. And then we have some style property also. There is one more DOM property known as style object, okay? Style DOM property. And this style DOM property has sub properties again like style dot color, style dot background, like that many are there, okay? How to use this style sub properties? Here style is a DOM property, under that sub properties like color background are there, okay? So if you want to do something like this, for example, I would like to um, go to this uh, page and here I would like to change the color of this practice automation. You see by default practice automation here is in which color? Black color. So I want to change the color to, let's say red color, I'll write down something. First I'll inspect this practice automation here and it has an ID, I'll copy this ID, I'll first locate that with the help of ID using the DOM statement, that is document.get element by ID and give the ID uh, and this will locate this practice automation here and say dot and now I'll say style property, style DOM property. Okay, instead of using this inner HTML ID, document title, document URL value and all the stuff wrapped, I'm using the style property. In the style property, we have one more property that is color property. Uh, I'll say is equal to red color, I'll give and press enter. You see, this particular text got changed into which color, red color. Similarly, I would like to change the background color of this. Uh, okay, now I'll write down, uh, let's say, instead of style.color, I'll say style.background. Ground is equal to, let's say, green. You see, it got changed to green color, right? Color is red color and background color is green color. Like that, I can do that. Like this kind of properties, there are many properties cases, okay? There are many sub-properties under, under this DOM uh, style property. If you want to know them, you can go to this application, okay? The W3Schools DOM object style page, you can go. And uh, let me show you what are the different DOM properties we have. DOM style properties, sub-properties, okay? With this style DOM property, right? There are sub-properties like, you know, already we have used something like uh, uh, what we have used so far, color we have used, right? This is, this is what already we have used, color we have used. and uh, the other one was a background, right? Somewhere background will be there also. We already used some background. You see, this one also we have used. Like the many properties are there. You see, all these are the properties. All these are the different properties like border, border button, border style, clip filter. Many things are there. Okay. So you can use any of these properties. I'm not going to demonstrate them to you because uh, because DOM will become a very lengthy topic if I demonstrate them. But these are general ones that uh, we use okay, in Selenium automation, right? When, whenever you have to use DOM statements uh, with the uh, JavaScript uh, statements inside the Selenium, right? During Selenium automation, right? Th this will be enough. This much is more than enough. And if something really pops out where, you know, you have to use something out of, uh, even this is not enough, then you can go to that kind of web pages and, you know, you know, you can get the things. So this is all about the practical demonstration of the DOM basics for Selenium, guys. So that's all for this session. See in the next session where I am going to show you the how to how to run the javascript for performing different operations on the uh, web elements of the web pages using selenium from the next session onwards a lot of activities i'm going to do by running some javascript code using selenium okay these are only basics i covered with this basic knowledge in the next session onwards we are going to do a lot of automation stuff okay using the javascript we are going to perform different actions or different things on the elements on the web pages so see you in the next session thank you bye bye